Brakatei Hawa, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is basically just uh, various topics <clears throat> dated <clears throat> April 6, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And um, I really don't have anything prepared. I just, you know, f feel, felt compelled to do a lesson. So I just, you know, jumped on it. And whatever. The spirit feeds me, I feed you, you know, the lambs and the sheeps of the Hawashai out there. Um, I was watching this brother's video, the brother Kwarai Bad out of the Houston camp. Uh, pray to escape all these things, the six troubles and the seventh. And, you know, brother was getting down. And, uh, you know, we've brought this up many times in the past because this is, you know, very important. Um, the preparation, the mental preparation. We don't know if we are part of the elect, but the scriptures do give us clues and hints as to what to do, you know, to hopefully be a part of that, you know, elect. We go to Second Peter 1 and 10, it says, Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence, see, to make your calling and election sure. Because one thing is for sure, one thing is for sure, we've been called to this. There's no doubt in our minds that we have been called to this. Now, are we chosen? We don't know that part. <clears throat> so in the meantime and in between time, you know, just um, give diligence in the hopes that this calling that the Lord called us in, he would also deliver us from the times to come. You know, and two precepts just came to mind. Let me see if I can remember both of them. Um, let me see, can't remember the other one, just right now at this particular time, let me see, uh, hopefully I can remember the other one. Well, any, anyways, let's just go to this one. Hebrews 6 and 9, hopefully the other one will come back. It says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, right? Because when you read up above this, it speaks about those that gave up, that, you know, pretty much try to put Yahushai to an open shame in so many words, <clears throat> that try to make light of Yahushai's uh, great sacrifice that he made for us. Right, it says, and things that accompany salvation, because this is the main thing. Things that accompany salvation is really what we're more concerned with. It says that though we thus speak, because we have to speak about people that fall out because this is a part of the doctrine, you know, and this is a part of what keeps us moving forward. This is a part of the fear of the Lord. This is a part of His great, you know, power. To where he can call someone in and you know and get rid of them, you know, and that's a you know that's a scary and also bitter part, you know, of the truth, you know. Uh, but it is necessary, you know. It's not one of my favorite subjects, but <clears throat> it's something that has to be taught because it is in the scriptures. All right, it says, for, but this is the point here: for the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. The other precept came to mind. <clears throat> Let's read that again. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Here it is. You know, we give up our life. You know, sacrifice our time, our bodies. You know, and everything for the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Shai. And then at the end, he's like, ah, you know what? I had to hell with you. You know, I don't need you. You know, what he doesn't need us, but the Lord is not unrighteous. And this scripture here that I'm about to show you in Lamentation, this is a scripture that used to get me through a lot of hard times, a lot of uh, a lot of tight spots, you know, when, when, when Satan was really turning the fire up and, you know, the, you, you let your thoughts get the best of you and, and, um, just to, you know, be there unchecked, you know, and just constantly like a splinter in your mind fucking with you. This is one scripture that 
used to get me through a lot of, you know, a lot of those times. The point is in the 36th verse, but Lamentation 3.35, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. To subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. And to subvert means to overthrow. You know, so if a man is sincerely following behind the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, in the sincerity of his heart or her heart, to try to serve the Lord as best as possible, the Lord is not going to overthrow that individual. You know, the Lord is not unrighteous, as we're reading here. In Hebrews 6 and 10, for the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. So this scripture here in Lamentation got me through a lot of tight spots in the past. So Lamentation 3.36, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. You see why? Because this individual is doing the best that they can to please the Lord, Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And especially if you're doing, you know, what the Lord commanded you to do. Or if we're doing what the Lord commanded us to do. All right, so going back to Hebrews 6 and 10, for the most high is not a righteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have uh, showed towards his name. And this is the thing. See, we are bearing the cross of Yahushai and bearing the, the um, shame, so to speak, that comes connected to those names. And this is why Great Millstone is the most hated camp out there. Great Millstone is the most, you know, um, slandered camp out there, so on and so forth. You know, you, the list goes on and on and on. We're called garbage, you know, we're called bums, you know, I mean, all kind of whatever you, and it, it's, no, it's, no, it's no coincidence because this is nothing new to us. See, back in, when, the, when we were all together still at One West, talking talk about going back to 93, well, actually around 94. End of 93 into 94, you know, because, you know, myself, Spirit brought me in January of 93. Other of the uh, bishops that you see, some of them came in somewhere in 93, 94. All right, so uh, by the time the elder apostle Tahar, the Spirit was on him heavy to come and teach us, which I was, I was elated. You know, because we needed, you know, a really good teacher to teach us because the guy at the time, you know, he was sincere. He did the best he could, but he wasn't really equipped to teach us. He could teach us the basic stuff, but after that, there was nothing else he could really teach us. And we were in dire need. You know, this is, I'm giving you my testimony. We were in dire need of a really, really, really good teacher. Uh, and the Spirit had Elder Pastor come up and... Um, you know, when he came up, <clears throat> you know, he was, uh, for lack of better, I hate to use this word, but for lack of better words, he was summoned <laughs> by King Marsha and High Priest Arya. And I'm, I'm not sure if it was some of the other high priests at the time, as their title was, to, to show his face more in New York. You know, because he was pretty much devoting his time to come, you know, between work and coming to Connecticut to teach us. He would come to Connecticut twice a week. Uh, for the most time, in the most part, he would come up on Wednesday nights to teach the class, and then he would come up on uh, Saturday nights, or actually Saturday, to, to for camp, and then afterwards for those marathon classes. And eventually, he decided in his mind through the Spirit that he was going to come up here and teach no matter what the elder said, because he saw that we needed the nurturing, so to speak. And uh, eventually, <clears throat> they, they came to an agreement, King Masha High Priest Arya with the Elder Pastor, and uh, we, would, we were to show our face in New York once a month, you know, so we would go down there once a month, hold camp, you know, be amongst the elders, um, and then, you know, afterwards, you would have the councils, late councils, you know, and then... Um, at that point, you know, um, High Priest uh, Lahab, as his title was back then, didn't like Elder Pastor because Elder Pastor would check him every time he goes off, and he didn't like that. You know, as the scriptures say, they hate him that rebuketh at the gate. So pretty much at that point, he knew that Elder Pastor was building and teaching us 
you know, the Connecticut brothers as we were known back then. Uh, and then eventually what he started calling us was F Troop. Now, those of you that are not familiar with F Troop, this is something that goes way back. I believe it was back in the 60s or 70s. I think that was Hogan's Hero, Hogan's Heroes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I didn't really watch that show too much, but I kind of remember the F Troop part. And that's what he would call us, the F Troop, you know? So the name calling and the pointing fingers and, you know, and looking at us crazy, saying all kind of sorts of twisted shit about us, is nothing new to us. You know, we've been there and that has happened to us before, so it's nothing new to us. All right? But all of these things they're doing to us because of the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And this is a part of bearing the cross. And this is the part of the bitterness of the truth that most are not wanting to deal with. They're not willing to deal with, you know, um, they're not willing to deal with uh, denying themselves because every man, woman is pretty much, for the most part, um, selfish. And in order to be able to, you know, deny yourself, you would have to, you know, not be selfish, you know, to put others' needs before yours, you know, in certain, certain cases. You know, so these are all the things of, of the shame and the reproach that we have to suffer for Yahweh Shai, pretty much the cross, part of the bearing of the cross. You know, so the Lord said he's not unrighteous to forget those works and labors that we have labored in love. Because that is a love, to put yourself in a predicament, you know, where you're always constantly taking L's, but still have the drive and desire to still do it anyway. And this is why it's beautiful that the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, although we go through those things, He still inspires us to, you know, to be zealous, to be on fire for this truth, even though, you know, it's pretty much just a life of just pretty much catching hell. But you have, it, it has its ups and downs. You know, you have your reprieves, you know, like even when um, Yahweh Shai was tempted, 40 days, you got to remember, see, when you read that, he wasn't just tempted that 40th day when he was hungry. He was tempted the whole 40 days by, by them demons messing with him. And the last day, which was when he was at his weakest point, that's when Satan came the hardest, you know. And uh, um, uh, trying to remember the, the point now. Um, damn, I just lost my train of thought, but that's all right. But it was all, you know, for for done for the name of Yahweh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The reason why we suffer these things. There was another point that kind of escaped me, but it's all good. Uh, if the spirit wants it to come out, it'll come out. So these are all things uh, shown uh, and through the cross of bearing the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And these things are going to happen. So the Lord said he don't, he don't forget that. He said and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Because a part of the ministering to the saints and do minister is pretty much to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And see, these are things that are not taught by other camps. See, there are certain camps out there that just teach about having a good time. You come to serve the Lord, everything's going to be all right. Which everything is going to be all right. But you're going to still have those fiery trials. You know? Matter of fact. Um, let's go to, what is that? First uh, Peter 4 and 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right? So when you're going through hell, don't look at it as a strange thing. Why? Because these things are written. You know, like years ago, you had this one guy on the common board said, man, you know, I was teaching my family, man. They come, my family's coming against me, man. I said, bro, what, what do you think you were involved in? And this is why we constantly say over and over again over the years that a lot of brothers out there still don't know what they're involved in. Because they read the scriptures and they, they, they can go and quote scriptures. They can, you know, but then when stuff happens to them, you know, they forget about what the scriptures say. That these things would happen. That's why the Apostle Peter said that. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Right? Because we're being purged. You know, when when you make jewelry, jewelry doesn't... 
when you see when you go to the to the jewelry store, you know, and you see all of those polished stones and polished, you know, silver or platinum or gold, you know, rings and 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 uh, earrings and necklaces and bracelets and all that. It didn't start that way. It started somewhere in the ground, dirty, filthy, mixed with all different types of, you know, impurities. <clears throat> and it had to go through a purging process of fire, you know. And after it went through that purging process of fire, you separated all the impurities from the the good stuff. The good stuff would also go through, a, you know, through being hammered out or, you know, being cut, you know, being, you know, uh, uh, engraved, you know, being, you know, having certain, uh, depending if it was a bracelet and you're going to put, you know, precious stones on it, you would have to make the, the, uh, little cup or whatever you call it to put the, the, uh, that precious stone in. So all of that stuff takes a process and that's just the same thing with the truth. When you're going, when you're catching hell, that's a good thing. Even though it don't feel good, <laughs> you know? So it says, as though some strange thing happened unto you, because what it's doing is purging and also making us better, even though it doesn't feel good. And you brothers that have been in the fire, <laughs> dancing in the fire, you know, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. You can, you, can, uh, you can vibe with what I'm saying. You can pick up on those vibes, you know. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find this one precept. Right. Hebrews 12 and 11. Brach the Al Bashem El Shai. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Right. Because what is chastening? Chastening is pretty much a, like a, a correction. You know, a beating, so to speak. A spiritual beating. But it doesn't, it, it ain't joyous. You know, it's not a joyous thing. It says, but grievous. And it is grievous. You know, and especially depending on the level of hell that you're going through at the time. You know, because it gets it, it gets worse as you progress in the truth. You know, you just go through different stages, right? Nevertheless, afterward, meaning after you've gone through that that chastening, it yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So you have to be exercised thereby. That's what the scriptures say. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and rebuketh often. <clears throat> Why? To keep them in check. <clears throat> so, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. See? So, a living sacrifice means you're going to be out there. You know, you're going to be in the elements. You're going to, you know, be subjected to... Standing on, you know, concrete, back aching, ankles aching, knees aching, neck aching, you know, standing on cobblestone, uneven ass cobblestone, you know, <laughs> trying to shift your weight back and forth, you know, so you could bear uh, the, the heat of the day, <laughs> you know, it says holy, acceptable to the most high, unto the most high, which is your reasonable service. And, it's just, and it is just that, our reasonable service. Because the Lord said that it pleased the Lord by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. You see? Uh, so the re word reasonable is logikos, where you get the word logic from, right? Logic or, or logos, which is word. Uh, pertaining to speech or speaking. Yeah, the word. Pertaining to the reason or logic. Spiritual Pertaining to the soul. So in other words, basically, when you understand what you're involved in, it helps to deal with, you know, your suffering, so to speak, or your trials and tribulations. So back in Hebrews 6, I'm going to read this again. Hebrews 6 and 10. For the most has done a righteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name. See? Towards his name. And that you, you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So the Lord is not going to forget that. So going here to Revelation 3 and 10, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. The word patience it means to suffer. And when you go to the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, the sixth chapter, also the second chapter, the second chapter said, When you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for diverse temptations. 
You got a lot of cats that quote that scripture, but then when it comes upon them, they're like, oh, man, I don't know about this. And that's where Ecclesiastes 6 comes in, you know, where it, it weighs upon them like a heavy weight, you know, and after a while, they say, nah, this ain't for me. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, I mean, it's cool teaching the word. It's cool, you know, going and eating chicken and sipping that yeah young, you know, and, you know, and, and being around the camaraderie of the brothers. And when I'm broke, brothers help me out, you know, and give me money, help me pay my bills or help me pay my rent or whatever the case may be. But suffering like this, oh, no. Losing my what? My wife, my children, my, my, my parents, my auntie. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't going to happen. Losing my job? Oh, no, how the hell am I going to pay my bills? You know, so when it comes to that, they, they're not, you know, they're not willing to do that. And they'll put, put the truth off. And it's been, and we've seen it many, 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 many times before in the past. Before the YouTube era and beyond. You know, so you, you have these new wet behind the ears cats coming in, you know, doing stuff and acting like they, they're coming up with a new with a new, with something new that we ain't never seen before, you know, because thou has kept the word of my patience, because you suffered for my sake, for my, for Yahweh Bashem Elshai's name's sake, for the defending of the gospel, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, the hour of temptation is coming, it's going to come, it's going to be many different things, martial law, the breakdown of society, so on and so forth, but ultimately, the final hour of temptation will be that micro hip. Uh, think of it in terms of Yahweh Shai being at the Garden of Gethsemane, which that was the hour of his temptation, how he felt, knowing that he was about to be put to death, knowing that, that the type of death that he was going to go through, you know, the pain that he was going to have to suffer, you know, and going at that time, apart from his disciples, to go and pray to the Most High to take that cup from him, if it be the Most High's will. You see? Because he could have easily said, nah, you know what, Peter and you know, the rest of the disciples, let's get the hell out of here, wait till that ninja Judas leaves, and then once he leaves to go get it, we're going we gonna to split out of here, man. We're going to cut out. We're going to Egypt. You know? He could have easily just bounced, but nah, he suffered it. He suffered the cross. He actually went on there because he knew that that was the only way. And when he prayed three times to the Father and didn't hear anything back, he knew. That's why when he came back the third time, because the first two times he was in heaviness. He said, you know, you can't wait for me one, with, with, with me one hour. And by the time the third time came up, he said, let's go. Because he already was resolved in his mind that, look, they ain't going to change. And he knew that they were coming. He said, look, sleep on, you know. So it says, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And the word world here and the word earth are synonymous one with the other. The word world here goes back to the word oikumeni, which means the whole inhabited earth. And the word earth means the same thing, the whole inhabited earth. It goes back to the word gay, gi, geo, where you get the word geography, which is the writings of the earth. All right? It says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And this is, you know, the reason why the Lord said that if you hold on, he's not unrighteous to forget our works and deeds and love. He knows that we're suffering. Yet remember, Yahweh Shai was here 2,000 years ago, going through the same stuff that we're going through. This is why he can sympathize with us, you know. The Father, of course, you know, he could sympathize with us because he knows that we're but flesh, you know. But Yahweh Shai was actually here on the earth. And suffered the same things that we're suffering. Was tempted with the same things that we're tempted with. But without sin. So going back to Second Peter 1 and 10. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence. To make your calling and election sure. Because we've been called. But now we're trying to make our election sure. And we do the works. You know to show our faith to Yahweh by Shemel Shai. In the hopes that when all hell breaks loose. He will cover us. You no, know, because what are we covered with? We're covered with, first and foremost, the blood of Yahweh Shai, and also with the word. Um, Psalms 91 and 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow 
of the Almighty, of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Because you know when we go into the word Almighty, the word there is Alashadja. And that means terrible demon-like power. So the Mosai, who is the king of terrors, his son, who is also the king of terrors, is coming to take vengeance upon this earth, take vengeance upon all the unfaithful, you know, take vengeance on the wicked and the unfaithful. So when he comes, we're asking the Lord to have mercy on us. Remember mercy upon us when all hell breaks loose. When you bring your wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk 3 and 2, O Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Yeah, the prophecies. O Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, I revived thy works in the midst of the years because now it's time for these prophecies to come to pass. But when you revive your works in the midst of the years, make known that it's you, Yahweh, doing these things. Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, in wrath, when you bring your judgments, when you destroy this place, remember mercy. You see? That's why the, the uh, prophets always say, Oh, woe is me, who shall deliver me in those days? Because you have to remember, they actually saw the destruction happening, the devastation. You know, when something, ha something minute happens, people panic. So just imagine in that day when, when, when sirens are going off and total chaos and anarchy is in the street, people are losing their mind because they don't know what to do. Because they've been so used to this comfortable life, you know, that normalcy bias, you know, and then you start hearing, you know, that Russia just launched missiles, China just launched the missiles, America launched the missiles, so on and so forth. And then those nukes start dropping and the fire starts blazing and the earth starts rocking. You know, how much more in panic mode are people going to be? Then when just a, a simple firecracker goes off or a couple of gunshots go off, go off, you know? Danger is going to be very prevalent in that day. So going back, so the Lord, so the Beckett and the other prophets said, in wrath, remember mercy. Remember mercy upon us. Keep that spirit in us. You know, we've, you know, you've put the spirit on us to serve you. To go out here and to deal with this truth. To go out here and defend your truth. To suffer for this truth. So please protect us in that day. See? So going back to Psalms 91. He that, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. What is the secret place of the Most High? The truth. This truth. Which is our shield and buckler. As the beloved Apostle Paul wrote. Let's look up this word secret place. The word there is Sathar. Sathar, covering, shelter, hiding place, secrecy. See, so think of it like this. The truth engulfing you like an invisible force field. Then no matter what comes to harm you, it won't be able to get through that force field. Because that'd be Yahweh Bashem Shai making that stuff bounce off from... The enchantments of these witches, Esau and them, to the malice that Jake has for for brothers, to anything, any danger you find yourself being protected, as the king, as King David mentioned in Psalms 23. You know, most people read this Christians and they don't understand what this is. Psalms 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right, because He's the one that feeds us constantly. Did not Yahweh Shai said I will come and sup with him? You know? It says, I shall not want because we're going to be protected. And our bread, our water, everything is going to be sure if we be the elect. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. In other words, to be in a state of we don't have to worry about nothing. Because the Lord is going to provide everything for us. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Because waters can get vicious. You know? And this is akin to Esau, his military. When they start, when they start ripping and, and running. And the Lord starts swinging Esau as his sword. The elect are going to be safe. You can read Psalms 124th chapter. That's my, one of my favorite chapters. He restoreth my soul. Right, when we feel like we're down to our, our last, you know, and, and we just need to be re-energized, recharged, 
the Lord's right there to recharge us at at the moment where we're just faint at the at, at our Samson moment after he killed all those Philistines with the jawbone of an ass he was thirsty he felt like his soul was his spirit was leaving him and then the Lord provided that water from he drank the water said so his spirit came back into him all right so the Lord restores our soul he leadeth me in the paths of right of, the, of righteousness for his name's sake so if you're not teaching the names of Yahweh Bashem Shai, then you're not going to be safe because you're doing it in the name of so-called Jesus or so-called Christ or th those those names that, that ugh, you know you're not doing it in the name of Yahweh Bashem Shai. therefore you're going to be left out there without a covering because the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth into it and it's safe Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is America. America is that valley of the shadow of death. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And we go straight to the point. Verse 65. And among the, these nations shall thou find no ease. Right, when the Lord scatters us, we would find no ease. We would be eventually here in America... The valley of the shadow of death. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. And you see that. You know. You have certain jakes out there that's you know, in constant fear. You know, like, like a leaf will fall and, and hit the ground. And you know, and they'll get nervous. But the Lord shall give thee. In, in our, that, that situation with, um, when that jake was whooping on them seven Edomites. He was beating their ass. You know. It didn't dawn on me at that moment. But. Afterwards, I thought about it. I said, oh, wait a minute. The scriptures say that one shall chase a thousand. So that was one Jake. He wasn't fully in shape, but he was serving them Edomites. He was serving them. So just imagine if he was in, in, in tip-top shape. He would have he would have really went through it. The scriptures say that Jake shall be like a, a young lion in the midst of sheep. <laughs> if he goes through both chariots and pieces and none can deliver. You see? But the Lord shall give thee there what a trembling heart, the valley of the shadow of death, and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And this is all that's here in, in America. You know, this place was, was the place that the Lord used to break our will. You know, that, that rebellious, demonic spirit, the Lord broke that here, broke Jake in this, in this country. And, you know, throughout Canada all the way down to South America, but mainly here in America. Failing the vice and sorrow of mine, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, the valley of the shadow of death. It says, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Right. You know, you, you have Jake in the hood, you know, you be sleeping. And there's accounts where Jake will be sleeping, or babies will be sleeping, or whatever, and bullets start ringing out and come through through the windows, come through the through the walls, and and kill someone in their in their sleep or in their bed or or on the couch watching television. So this is the the uh, valley of the shadow of death. In the morning thou shalt say the, what the Most High will evening right. If the Lord will, we'll make it to the evening. And at even thou shalt say what the Most High will morning. At night, if the Lord will, we make it to the morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. So America is that valley of the shadow of death. So Psalms 23 and 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, America, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, which is thy truth, and thy staff, which is the truth, which is what leads us, they comfort me. That's why it says, The knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Salakia. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies, which is this truth. Thou anointest my head with oil. Once again, the truth. Remember the wise virgins. My cup runneth over with what? With this truth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because he will remain in the secret place of the Most High. And I will dwell in the house of Yahweh by Shemel Shai forevermore. 
So the word secret place is a covering, a shelter, a hiding place, a secrecy. So when all hell is breaking loose, you know, um, the elect will be protected, you know. And um, I remember a dream or a vision that my ex, you know, told me years ago. This goes back to the 90s. Says she had a dream, a couple of dreams, but one in particular, she said that uh, we were in this big house and she said she looked out the window and there were like drops of rain falling down, but it looked like black ink. So I, I, I um, attributed that to the calamities that are going to be coming out here, the dark days that are coming. And she said that we told them to the, the women and the children just to get up under the, the tables and don't worry or something like that. You know, I don't really remember the rat. I think that was pretty much the main part of it that I kind of remember. You know, so dark times are coming. You know, and the only ones that will be protected from these dark times are going to be the elect of the nation of Israel. That's why we give diligence to make our calling and election sure in the hopes that when it when this whole shithole goes up in flames, the Lord will be there to protect us. You know, and there's many visions and, you know, dreams that brothers, sisters had, you know, about the destruction, about hard times that are coming, martial law, so on and so forth. And uh, eventually the elect are going to come out on top. Now, years ago, I've told this uh, story before. Years ago, when we used to spend hours upon hours upon hours on the common boards going back and forth with individuals, um, I'm not sure who... The brother is, but he was from ISUPK. We were going back and forth on a common board, you know, because he was he was being a little fresh, and I was pretty much chasing him from mm -hmm. video to video because you know he was going to videos and messing with brothers, and um, we were going back and forth, and um, eventually it, it got to the point where I started feeling sorry for the guy, and I told him, you know, look, brother, I don't hate you. I said, I wish, I sent him a, a private message. I don't hate you. I wish, you know, you were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother, you know, and you could see the things that we see, the things that are coming, you know. And then he opened up to me. He said, well, look, brother, he said, because um, he knew who I was. He said, uh, I had a dream that the, uh, you know, that Esau, the military or something like that, the feds or something like that were coming after you, you know, I'm talking about the men of Great Millstone. And I'm not going to type type it out on here because you know how YouTube does. He said, but let's, I'll put it to you like this. You brothers did okay. And that was like a, a, a comfort, you know, because I really was sincere in what I told him. I really meant that, you know, like I wish he could see what we see. That way he wouldn't be fighting us. But at the end of the day, this is only meant for the elect. Not everybody's going to get this truth, you know. As much as you may like somebody, if they're not meant to get it, they're just not going to get it. It ain't about who we like. It's about who Yahweh Bashem Shai likes and who does his work and his will and who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, I was, back in Psalms 91 and 2, I will say of Yahweh Bashem Shai, He is my refuge and my fortress, my power in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Who is the fowler? The fowler is Esau. He's a bird catcher. The snare is a trap. The world is being ensnared in the trap of this digital currency, which eventually they want to put up, you know, the, uh, the um, MOTB, which is a micro C-hip in people, to be able to track, control, uh, uh, say who has access to this, um, system or not and it's and it's getting worse and worse to where you have a lot of you know digital currencies being pushed through different nations uh, uh elder pastor just did a lesson a few days ago on uh this guy uh, mike from rtd uh where he pretty much i guess he was speaking about aussie or the australians going cashless you know because they start somewhere um, Switzerland, same thing. You have a lot of people in Switzerland that are micro c hipped And this is the plan for the whole world. And this is why everything is going digital. This is why, you, you know, every, they, at one point they started doing the, the uh, 
uh, cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin, the Dogecoin, and all those different cryptocurrencies, which I really was never with that because you never have those coins in your hand. It's just a, a, um, a computer, you know, that tells you you have this much, but you don't have it tangibly in your hand. So anytime they could shut it down and you'll be asked out. But the point is that everything is going digital. They have, you know, um, biometrics being pushed throughout the four corners of the earth for payments. And this is why those false prophets that have been fighting against the MOTB being a micro C hip. Some of them just said the hell with it. They don't even talk about it no more. Others are trying their best to try to twist, turn, and manipulate, you know, to make it to where, nope, that's not it. They might throw a micro C hip in there, but that's not the MOTB. You know, so they'll fight it every step of the way until it actually happens. And then when it happens, just like back in the past, the same individual that couldn't see that 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 uh, Cornelius was an Israelite that kicked us out. Fifteen years later, he starts teaching that Cornelius is an Israelite. You know, he's a ten to fifteen year prophet. You know, so these things are, are happening, and this is the snare of the fowler, this the uh, trap that these devils are springing on the world. That's why Yahweh, I said, because you kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them. It says, surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. What is the noise and pestilence? That destruction that wastes at noonday, which are the missiles dropping. And simultaneously with the missiles dropping, the lasers are going to be hitting from the chariots. The elect are going to be going up into the chariot of Yahweh Shai. And that's going to be the only place where you're going to be safe, secure, and sure. Because anywhere else on the planet, you're sub subject to die. Because the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard. You see what happened out there. Well, New York got rocked in the, the Pennsylvania, Connecticut, some other places by a 4.8 that started in Jersey. Right? And then you had Taiwan that just had a, a, a the strongest earthquake in 25 years. And you've seen two buildings almost topple over. They're, they're leaning in a 45-degree angle right now as we speak. So just imagine when the whole world is shaking from those missiles hitting it, the tsunamis and the buildings coming crashing down. Man, this, it's going to be horrible in the, in the world. And the only safe place is up in those chariots. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. What are the chambers? The chariots. And shut thy doors about thee, because the same scenario of Noah's Ark is going to happen in this time, except it's going to be fire instead of water. It's going to be the chariots instead of an ark. So the new ark will be pretty much a Hawashai's uh, chariot. It says, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, because it's only going to take an hour to destroy this place. It's going to be on a, on a sudden. Until the indignation be overpassed. What is indignation? The righteous anger of the Most High. Till it's passed. To be overpassed. See? Like the Passover. Let's go real quick to Isaiah 31. And 5. It says, As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. And when, every time I see birds in flight, I think about this scripture. And you see them, they look like an arrow. Because what they're doing is they're cutting the wind. Or they're cutting the air. You know, and, and that formation helps them to cut through the air. And then when one gets tired, it'll move back and another one will move in place. Or when one drops, another one will take its place. You know, and that's how the Lord is coming in those chariots, in the formation. It says, defending also, he will deliver it because he's coming to deliver the purchased possession which are the elected, the nation of Israel. And passing over the second Passover, he will preserve it. You see? So that's why it's important to remain in the good graces of Yahweh Bashem Shai, to be protected from the snare of the fowler, which a lot of Jake's going to fall into, and from the noise and pestilence, which is a destruction and the payment for not being faithful to Yahweh Bashem Shai. So he shall cover thee with his feathers. What are the feathers? The chariots, once again. Let's go from there to Psalms 
68 and uh, I started 11 the Lord gave the word great was a company of those that published it right the, the prophets kings of armies did flee apace and she that uh, tarried at home divided the spoil though you have lying among the pots right so we're like we were like dirty dishes. Israel shall be amongst the nations as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Yet shall you be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. In other words, we're going to be beautified, magnified. And the dove is talking about the chariots. All right? Because there's no dove that has wings that have silver on them and feathers with gold. Otherwise, they would be too heavy and they wouldn't be able to fly. So this is a, this is parabolic talk for the chariots that are coming to deliver us. So the Lord is going to give us a swift deliverance, you know, like He did during the time of Egypt, because this is going to be the second Egypt. Remember, He said, "I, I have put, bore you on eagles' wings." You know, you had the great escape uh, as of a, as of an eagle. It says, when the Almighty scattered kings in it, meaning in the chariots, because the Lord fucked, you know, you know, these nations up with the chariots. Remember what he did to Pharaoh and, and to his armies? It was white as snow and salmon. Right. This particular chariot was white. And I've actually seen a white chariot before. I was, was when I was driving school buses back in the 90s. And I was getting off the exit to go bring the, the bus back. And uh, I saw this object in the sky, and it was white, but it was like a metallic, shiny white. It was, man, it was it was beautiful. And I'm like trying to pull over, because I was just getting off the exit, and I tried to pull over to see if I could see it, but it disappeared. But it was like, it was like no white that I've ever seen. It was, man, it was beautiful. It was, it was a decent size, but it was like, it just, it was there one minute, and then it was gone. You know, but it was it was gleaming white. So the hill of the Most High is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan, because the Lord is going to protect His Mount Zion, His elect. Why leap ye high hills? This is the hill which the Most High desired to dwell in, right? Because the Lord ain't dealing with these nations. That's why He said you could take all of Lebanon, all of the woods of the best wood, and make altars and and, and burn fires. And take all of the animals and sacrifice them on that on those altars, and the Lord still is not going to choose the other nations over the nation of Israel. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. So if the Lord is going to dwell in it forever, and Yahweh is coming to establish His kingdom, how in the fuck is Esau going to get back into power after a thousand years? <clears throat> then it goes on to say the chariots of Yahweh Bashem are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place, right? Because when the Lord came down in Mount Sinai, when he gave Moses the law to give to the children of Israel, the chariots were there. What do you think it means when it says, and the glory of the Lord, you know, was there? The chariots. You know? And that's, man, that's a, that's a heavy topic within itself. So Psalms 91 and 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. That This is parabolic talk for the chariots. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Let's look up those two words. Shield and buckler. Shield is tazanah. Tazanah. That's a good name for a brother. Another word name for shield is managan. Tazanah. It says something piercing. Hook. Barb. Meaning dubious, coolness, cold of snow, shield, large shield, buckler, shield. Uh, and and the, and we're not gonna charge you if, if you take this name Tazana. <laughs> uh, and buckler. Sahara, Sahara. That's another name for a brother. Buckler, shield. It says, check this out, something surrounding the person. <laughs> An example, the shield, buckler. It's the truth. It's being submerged in the truth. You know, being 
engulfed in the truth, being inside of the force field of the truth. You dig? Well, I dig the man watching inside joke. <laughs> It's like a dove when doves fly. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, right? Because it's going to be terror out here. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. What is that arrow? The arrow are the missiles. Nor for the pestilence that wasteth, I'm sorry, that walketh in darkness, any sickness, disease, you know, and ultimately the, the uh, missiles. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. What is this, the destruction that wasteth at noonday? The destruction is the the lake of fire, which are the missiles when they drop. And noonday represents at the highest peak of Esau's kingdom. So what is the highest peak of Esau's kingdom? The highest peak of Esau's kingdom is when he establishes his new world order. And he's about to eat. The Lord shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. And that cannot happen until the MOTB is fully implemented. You see? See? A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because you're going to be protected. You have that thawa, that exemption from judgment. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because the righteous are going to be going up into the air, into the chariots. Looking down from the chariots, looking upon America and seeing the lake of fire. You know, there's going to be a small one over there in the land of Israel. As other parts of the earth that will get hit, we don't know exactly what, but we know definitely 100% of America and 100% of Israel will, will be singed, you know, because Israel has to be cleansed of all that filth that's in there. What did you do when the heathen would, would uh, desecrate the temple? You would have to burn all of that stuff and then rededicate it. You know, take, take certain stuff and get rid of it, burn it, destroy it. You know, if they... Um, if they uh, sacrifice swine on the altar, you have to take the altar, burn that, you know, and you have to start all over again. So that's what the Lord is going to do with the land of Israel, because that is, you know, his, the place of his feet, all right, so to speak. Because thou hast made the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, you know, constantly involved in the work. Somehow or another. There shall no evil befall thee. Uh, there's a scripture. I'm not sure if that's in the Proverbs or Ecclesiasticus. There shall no evil come near him. That's that's uh, constantly involved in his truth. Or something like that. I can't. I'm just merely paraphrasing it. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. See? Nothing. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. And this is a scripture that. Satan tried to use on Yahweh Shai when he told him to jump off of the pinnacle. Yahweh Shai cursed him out, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. They shall bear thee up in their arm in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, right? Because nothing will be able to harm us. You know, not Esau, not the nations, not animals, nothing. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, on high, <laughs> up in the sky, because he has known my name. See, so the particular group is in trouble. Or actually, the particular couple of groups are in trouble that don't teach the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. It says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Why? Because he had known my name. I will be with him in trouble. Why? Because he had known my name. I will deliver him. Why? Because he had known my name. And honor him. Why? Because he had known my name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Man. Woo. Yeah, so this is just like I said, various topics. Barakat Yahweh Bashem al Shai for allowing me to, you know, feed, feeding me to feed you, brothers and few sisters out there. And I pray that. You brothers and few sisters have been edified to the next time I say Shalom. You know, keep your head up. You know, keep on fighting. You know, even if it seems like you're losing, eventually you take enough L's, you know, they'll turn into W's. You know, and Lord's will soon, you know, which we see all the prophecies popping off, the Lord will, will you know, switch this thing into high gear and deliver us, you know, from the perils that are coming.
in these dark days. So, hey, shalom.